Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for inviting me to speak with you today. And so um, first I want to open up with thank you because I understand yesterday there was some pretty heavy discussion around cybersecurity. And, and so I wasn't exactly sure if everybody was running for the hills and that you'd come back today and, and participate. So thank you for coming back. And second, happy Valentine's Day. So today is uh, February 14th, the day of love. And so I'm happy to share with you something that we care strongly about and I'm sure that you do as well. And that's the subject of water, right? And that we, we face critical water challenge today globally. And so the focus of my discussion this morning is really gonna talk about digital transformation and the impact that industry can make to address this water challenge. So, with that being said, uh, again, my name is Katie Cope. I'm Director of Marketing for the Power Segment within Nalco Water. And in 2011, Nalco Water was acquired by Ecolab. And so I'm not sure if uh, you're familiar with Ecolab, but Ecolab is a global solution provider for water, hygiene, and energy services and technologies. And so, what does that mean? So we really partner with industries across really a broad depth of industries from retail and hospitality, such as the hotel that we're staying in today, to healthcare providers, to industrial manufacturers. So that is power producers, which I'm very fond of, chemical processors, as we have you know, Dow uh, sitting on the panel with us today, um, oil and gas industry, um, steel, and aluminum manufacturers, paper producers, mining, and so I believe that there was some discussion about the mining industry yesterday, as well as food and beverage processors, and then automotive. And so we really partner with industrial manufacturers to address four things. To help them promote, as well as enable, clean water, safe food, abundant energy, and healthy environments. And so today, we're really going to talk about the clean water aspect of how we partner with customers to minimize water use, but knowing that the importance of that from an operational perspective is that at the same time we maximize performance or productivity at a total lower cost of operation. And so to get started, I'll show a quick video to kind of set the stage for the discussion, and, um, and, then, and then we'll talk more in regards to the impact. Our customers use a lot of water to make their products. It's just inherent in manufacturing. Our ambition when we work with the customer is to reduce their water consumption between 25 and 75 percent. Freedy Tracer, in conjunction with Microsoft Cloud, by far has changed the way we do business. It takes a reading of the water quality to make sure it's safe and is being used wisely. One of the best things that the cloud has provided us is being able to take over 27 billion data points across these million customer sites and turn that into more actionable intelligence. So how they can make better cars or milk or steel or paper while using less water to do so. With the Microsoft Cloud, we have a goal by 2030 to preserve 300 billion gallons of water annually. And that's equivalent to the drinking needs of a billion people. So while we work with industrial customers to reduce water, we know it has an impact on the broader population. So, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> So why does this matter? And so looking forward, it's projected that population is gonna to grow to over nine billion people. Now this is global number and by 2050, but in order to support that population growth, there are some things that are gonna to have to happen by 2030. And so 2030 really isn't too far away from now. I mean, it's in arm's reach, but in order to support that growth, we're gonna need 35% more food 50% more energy and 40% more water. And the issue is that the demand for the water is going to outweigh the supply by that amount, 40%. So globally, we'll have a 40% water shortage in regards to the demand. And so the challenge really is from a, from a mindset perspective of how we think about water. And so I talk about uh, how we think about water from a consumer 
good. And by that, it's twofold. Your personal you know, view of water and then industry's role in water. And industry is the second biggest user of fresh water use outside of agriculture. Industry is, uh, uses about 20% of the fresh water source in manufacturing. On the personal note, um, it's interesting just to shift how you think about water um, and, and how water is embedded in our everyday products. And so this morning when I had a cup of coffee in my room, I didn't sit there really and realize that it took 50 gallons of water for me to enjoy that one cup of water. Right, or that the jacket that I'm wearing today took 700 gallons of water to manufacture. Or a loaf of bread that you enjoy either this morning at breakfast or some of the bread anyways, maybe not a whole loaf. But 370 gallons of water. So every day, and then if you drive a car, 37,000 gallons of water to manufacture one automobile. And so there's water that's embedded every day in our personal use. And it's a mindset shift to think about that. I was talking with somebody from Cape Town not too long ago, and, and if you're aware, Cape Town is under some severe water issues, where they really judge what they're going to do that day based on, is it enough for me to use the water? Is it enough for me to take a shower today? Is it enough for me to brush my teeth today? Those things that we take for granted, and it's a mind shift, mindset shift in thinking of water as a consumer good, and how much water it takes to actually produce some of the normal everyday things that we enjoy. And then from an industry perspective, a mindset change in regards to thinking about water in a linear fashion. Meaning, water comes into a facility, we use water to manufacture something, and then some of that water is used or consumed during the process, some of it could be evaporated during the process, but then ultimately it's discharged back to the environment. So very kind of linear. And so the issue, whoop, I went back, the issue with that is that the problem isn't just one-fold, it's two-fold. It's a matter of quantity as well as quality. And so there are opportunities where there may be an abundance of water to use, but not necessarily in the quality that we need it in order for our operations to run smoothly. So it's really a combination when we talk about the critical water issue globally. It's the quantity plus the quality that's available that imposes business risk. And by business risk, there's an opportunity or in conjunction with TrueCost and Microsoft, there's a financial model available that businesses can go out today, so it's, it's, it's publicly available on the website, where, and it's a financial model for you to really assess the risk of your water situation. And so this can be done for a local plant, or an enterprise across the globe to understand what risk does, is posed to your business from a quantity perspective, from an availability, but then also a quality. So that you have data to make decisions and that it's not necessarily just for the short term, but the, for the long term. And you can monetize that situation. For if we can't monetize something, we won't monitor it and we won't do anything about it. So it's really important to put a business financial application to the value of water, for it does have value. And so what that really promotes is this shift in thinking of water from a linear perspective and a consumable perspective to what I'll say a circular perspective. So we talk about circular water or recyclable. And so from an industry perspective, if you take a look at the water balance across a facility or an operation, there are primarily five applications that are very water rich in production oriented business or industrial businesses. Water comes into a facility, you pre-treat the water. So there's a pre-treatment area. You use water in your utilities, a boiler, a boiler room, or a cooling water process. You process water, so you have processed water that's used in your actual production area. And then there's an area called wastewater, right? So we treat water as we release it back into the environment. You'll see here on the slide that it says post-treatment because we don't like to think about wasting water, so we're gonna call it post-treatment, and that's treating the water before you put it back into the environment. And so the challenge from an industry perspective is how do we minimize water use but still maximize the performance as well as lower total cost of operations. And so there's a challenge that you can, in a simple, not a new concept, reduce, reuse, and recycle water. 
And so you can, in an operation, save 20% of your water use by just, in these five applications, optimizing the performance and the efficiency at that application. So in a pretreatment -pre area or your cooling water area, by improving the performance, you can optimize and minimize 20% of your total water use across a facility. That increases to 80% if you are open to challenging yourself to reuse water. And so that means taking water from one application and then reusing it into another application. So for example, if you're using your process water as you're using that on your production floor, you can then take that discharge water and use it as your makeup water in your cooling tower. And by just doing that, you're able to or can optimize your water utilization by 80%. And then there are some that can get to 100% by going strictly to zero liquid discharge and recycling that post-treatment or wastewater back into when it comes into your facility, pre-treat it and reduce and recycle it 100%. So there's options that industries have in order to recycle or reduce or reuse their water. Now the problem exists for operations because the more you recycle or reuse the water, it doesn't really like it. Right, so it creates problems. And so just think about your coffee pot at home, right? So you, you fill it up, you use water. If you don't clean it every once in a while, you get scale buildup, it doesn't perform as well, the coffee doesn't taste as good. So there are cre three critical things that happen when you recycle water over and over again. It builds up scale on your assets, corrosion on your assets, and then there's an opportunity for macro fouling. Right? Macro fouling can lead to all types of performance issues at the application site, but then downstream from a water safety perspective as well. So I don't say that necessarily in order for us to prevent moving forward, because there are solutions available. And the solution available that we have is a technology called 3D Tracer technology, and the 3Ds are significant because it, it's a technology that really utilizes a combination of data, so it's a controller that senses data of your water, and so you've got water quality conditions such as pH, turbidity, conductivity, other important parameters to an operation that are monitored every two seconds and a reading is taken. Every two seconds, it's put on a monitor, but then the second D is that it's then combined with chemistry. So it can determine the variability of water, which is always ever-changing, and it's that variability that has down, down the line production issues. But 3D Tracer detects, that's the first D, it'll detect the variability. It'll determine a solution from a high performing polymer in order to adjust itself automatically to that variability. And then it will determine and automate the solution so that that variability is minimized. And it's really taking out that variability that then gives operators peace of mind. Peace of mind that their ever-changing water quality conditions will not interrupt their production. So we talked about it gives them the ability to know that water's not going to be a risk in their operation, ultimately allowing them to minimize their water use, but again, maximizing performance through increased uptime so you don't have to take downtime to clean things or unexpected outages because of issues, or asset, better asset utilization or asset protection so that they live longer, and then ultimately lowering total cost of operations. So for example, I'll give you a case study of partnering with a power plant in Mexico. Um, this power plant was in a high water stressed area where in order to meet the demands of the local community for power generation, they really needed to be able to utilize different water sources. So again, we talked about quantity of water and then quality of water. They didn't have a lot of fresh water, so they had to move to a gray water source. And I know that a lot of plants here in Florida do the same thing. Um, and more and more plants are utilizing gray water too. But the issue is that there wasn't a full abundant supply and the variability was changing. And so doing really a full water balance across their facility, understanding what those critical parameters are from their operational perspective, we were able to implement a database technology that allowed them to automatically treat their system 
ultimately helping them save 675 million gallons of water a year. And by minimizing that water use, they were able to then have down the line uh, other opportunities in energy savings, in CO2 emission reductions, and then ultimately reducing their total cost of operations. So how does it work? It's a combination. So it's a combination of data technology, of software, of equipment, of chemistry, um, automation. But I think the, the point I want to make from this slide is that you can't take the people part out of the equation. And so we have a system assurance center actually in Pune, India, that is open 24-7. That is monitoring these units that we have across the globe. And they're really monitoring to make sure that the systems are working correctly and that they're addressing customer needs. But then there are such things as critical alarms that sometimes the technology on itself cannot correct. And so we have people monitoring the systems. And then if there is a critical issue, they're, a lo they're alerting what I'll say is the local representation at the account. So that local person can work with the customer, have the data available on an Envision dashboard or a dashboard where all of the data is assembled so that a local person then has visibility, can interpret the data, and then action the data with the customer, and then provide them the visibility not only at one plant, but across their entire enterprise to really understand the value that's being associated from the technology on their water usage, the performance of their operations based on the technology, and the risk that's being mitigated. So, there are 36,000 of these units deployed across the globe, and we're managing 27 billion data points in order to really create insight into operations of how to address water scarcity from a quantity and quality perspective. In 2015, the slide says that we partnered with our customers. It's our customers that are saving this water. <laughs> and, and, and we enabled them to say, uh, save 142 billion gallons of water a year. Now, last year, 2017, that increased to 165 billion gallons of water. And you heard on the video that we don't want to stop there. We want to continue. And by 2030, our commitment is to continue to partner with customers to double that number, to get to 300 billion gallons of water a year, which is the equivalent of the human drinking needs of 1 billion. And by 2030, as we talked about, this 40% need to increase our water conservation, we believe that 300 billions will help enable some of the needs that we'll need based on the growing population. So I'll end with just one more case study. And I, I, I use this case study, it's, it's a Microsoft case study, and I think it's relevant because of what we're talking about today, right? The internet of things, digital transformation. And as we continue to grow in this digital revolution, um, Microsoft's at the forefront, and data centers and the importance of operating data centers and protecting data becomes more and more relative. And Microsoft, they, they operate a facility in San Antonio, Texas. And you can see on the slide, the graph on the right-hand side, under extreme water-stressed areas where they don't have enough water in order to continue to operate. And so it was really imperative for them to do a water risk assessment to understand the longevity of the facility at San Antonio, but then over across all of Microsoft data centers. And in this particular example, by utilizing technology based on data and insight that allowed them to action areas to create more efficiencies in their cooling water aspects of their data center, they were able to save 60 million gallons of water at that San Antonio facility. But along with that, also reduce total cost of operations. So we know that they go hand in hand, that we, again, partner to minimize water, but knowing we have to maximize also the performance at a lower total cost of operations. So I'm going to end there and just say I, our company looks forward to working with all of you across all of industries to partner on how we address this critical water challenge together. And I'll look forward to answering some of the questions with other executives on, on the panel. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, 